Okay, let's go on to part two of uh, nonsense, the notion of uh, the electron particle. We have in our sick minds that, <laughs> that there are actually particles flowing through wires. Of course, wireless power induction is an absolute reality. Wireless power induction uh, through a complete vacuum, which obviously no particles are involved, is an absolute reality. Yet we still have this sick notion in our heads that, uh, that, uh, that uh, power transference or discharges, i.e. electricity, has anything to do with particles, that there are actually electron particles flowing through a wire. There is absolutely no evidence whatsoever, and I'll get to the electron microscope in a second, you probably don't know this. Like, well, electron microscopes are shooting out electrons. No, they're not. It's really easy to explain. I'll get to it in a second. You know, it is absolutely absurd, and there are certain branches of uh, quantum science, which of course is not a science at all, it's nothing other than Greek, Greek atomism, that believes that magnetism is uh, mediated by charges, why yeah, even uh, the very uh, uh, idiot himself that wrote QED Strange Theory of uh, Light and Matter, uh, Richard Feynman, who is a complete and total moron, thank goodness he's dead, we don't need more of his stupidity on this earth, um, believe that <laughs> magnetism was mediated out by virtual photons, of which there is absolutely no existence whatsoever. You know, none. I mean, it's like it's like saying that unicorns, you know, that invisible uh, microscopic unicorns are mediating out uh, magnetic uh, force parameters and uh, you know field strengths uh, that are read by a Gauss meter. Complete, absolute, insane absurdity. And this is no different than uh, the atomism that exists within the... Uh, and all of this is due to Western existentialism. Now, the Greeks suffered from it 2,000 years ago, but the Platonists and the Aristotelians destroyed it. But it's alive again. And we have this notion that there are particles flowing through wires, and this sort of insanity just can't stand. Um, there's no rest mass to an electron. It is given here that the electron is no more than a broken loose a broken loose hold fast under the grip of the tension with the dielectric lines of force. These are broken ends of the split uh, of the split and a half package of spaghetti. Obviously this reasoning is not welcome in the realm of Einstein's theory of relativity, as Eric B. Dollard. And uh, he's absolutely correct. Um, I mean, it's nothing other than a pathetic absurdity. This whole notion is based upon a uh, misunderstanding of the nature of light. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, you can't even conceptualize this thing as rational. Wireless power induction alone would think that any sensible person would re-examine, well, we know that we're transferring power from one terminal to the next in a complete vacuum, although a complete vacuum is nearly impossible, and through a vacuum, and you can do wireless uh, power induction through 10 feet of lead if you have enough uh, power at the uh, the inductor uh, to the, re the, the reception plant on the other side of the lead. So we, we should rethink this notion that uh, power has anything to do with particles. It's an absurdity. It's the same thing as thinking uh, that magnetism is mediated out by particles. But wait, that's exactly what quantum mechanics please. QED, Strange Theory of Light, Matter by Richard Feynman, and the rest of these idiots think that magnetism is particles as well. But of course that's impossible because Supposedly nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, but the speed of light is nothing other than a rate of induction. Okay, and it only has to do with the rate of induction being a max, c squared, uh, for transverse phenomena. Electromagnetic are obviously transverse uh, phenomena uh, that have uh, magnitude. Anything that has magnitude has a limit of trans, uh, uh, a limit of induction. The, that rate of induction, with, if it has a transverse uh, attribute, is uh, the speed of light. But we know that uh, dielectric discharges can occur faster than the speed of light. Tesla proved this, uh, Dollar proved this, other people proved this, because they have no transverse nature. You know, they have no transverse phenomena like the electromagnetism does, which has magnitude. Therefore, the rate of induction is limited to c squared, uh, the, actually the speed of light. Unfortunately, to a large extent, in dealing with dielectric fields, a prehistoric concept of the electrostatic charge, or the electron, on the conductor still exists, and by its use destroys the analogy between the two components of the electrical field, the magnetic and the dielectric. This makes the consideration of dielectric field comprehension unnecessarily complicated and incorrect. 
This is uh, from Electrical uh, Discharges and Waves and Impulses by Charles Brodius Steinman. It's one of the most intelligent people who ever lived. And compared to everybody that else that's out there living right now, a god, you know, he gave us, Tesla, people think, well, Tesla gave us all of our electrical grade. Well, no, he did, but Heaviside and uh, Charles Brody assignments and uh, Oliver Heaviside and others really gave us the, the reality of it. Now, the idea of electricity as the flow of electrons in a conductor was regarded by Oliver Heaviside. Oliver Heaviside was a god of electrical theory. There isn't a single person in uh, electrical engineering at any level that is going to say that Oliver Heaviside or Charles Brody Steinmetz were anything other than gods compared to their little pathetic, midget, minuscule, subhuman brains. There's none of them that can even step to these people. The idea of electricity, flow of electrons, a conductor was regarded by Oliver Heaviside as quote-unquote a psychosis, a mental psychosis. This encouraged Oliver Heaviside to begin a series of writings. Oliver Heaviside's writings on electrical theory are so complicated your brain would explode, and they form the basis of much of today's modern electrical grid all over the entire world. Okay? Tesla came up with the AC motor, but these guys incorporated all the electrical theory, transient waves and phenomena, Heaviside, Steinmetz, okay? This wasn't just Tesla. Um, also consider the fact J.J. Thompson considered the uh, concept of the electron. An electron was the terminal end of one unit of dielectric induction. This is from the discoverer of the electron. He denied forever that it was a particle. The only reason he changed his mind, he probably never did, is that he was offered fame and a Nobel Prize. Oh gee, I wonder why he caved. Electrons as a separate distinct entity don't really exist. They are merely bumps in something called a field. A field is not defined. Dr. Stephen Biller. See, you can't say that stretching a trillion rubber bands nailed to the floor and releasing them and breaking their lines of force is the flow of electrons. Discharge is a terminal movement in the system of inductance of dielectric capacitance. There are no discrete particles in the universe and certainly none that mediate out charges, discharges, magnetism, electromagnetism, gravity, and radiation. Only fields, which are all modalities of the ether. These so-called electrons are not particles, not objects, or subject by the dynamic principles of discharge and are certainly not charge carriers. Fields are not particles, are not electrons, nor assuredly are they energy discharges in the vacuum of space involving electrons. The electron is a fiction of a fallacious, fallacious observation and an even more faulty mental acuity spawned naturally from the minds of materialists or an atomist. Electricity is uh, ether in a state of dynamic polarization. Magnetism is ether in a state of dynamic circular polarization. Um, uh, polarization upon itself is the radiative uh, termination of electrical discharge. Dielectricity, ether under stress or strain. The motions and strains of the ether give rise to electrification. Phi times psi equals Q and Planck electrifications. Now, electrons do not mediate out these electrical magnetic forces uh, or their likewise uh, ether field modalities. Anybody thinks that particles are flowing through a wire has uh, a mental defect, okay? Uh, the notion of an electron is pure bullshit. Excuse my language. It's nothing more than Greek atomism. The universe is not a gigantic sea of tiny billiard balls rolling and banging around and spinning. This uh, ancient rehash notion of uh, atomism, let me actually check the time really quick, is nothing more than uh, an absurdity. Let me uh, quickly talk about, okay, quickly talk about uh, the electron microscope, because I know that'll be the first question you made. So, what about the electron microscope? We got all these images of, uh, of uh, you know, stuff and things uh, with the, the electron microscope. <laughs> so, let's talk about the electron microscope. Sounds like a good idea. Because the SEM scanning electron microscope utilizes vacuum conditions and uses supposedly electrons to form uh, images, Special preparations have to be applied to the sample. All water has to be removed from the samples because the water would vaporize in the vacuum, obviously so. All metals are conductive and require no preparation before being used in the SEM. All nonmetals, like little insects and whatnot, need to be made conductive by covering the sample with a thin layer of conductive material. This is done by using a device called a sputter coater. The sputter coater uses an electric field and argon gas. The sample is placed in a small chamber that's a vacuum. Argon gas and electric field uh, uh, cause uh, to be removed from the argon. You mix the uh, 
it makes the atoms positively charged. Actually, it just adds a positive charge to the sample that is meant to be scanned in. Now, the argon ions become attracted to the negatively charged gold foil, and the argon ions uh, knock uh, gold atoms from the surface of the gold foil, and these uh, gold atoms fall and settle onto the surface of the sample, producing a very, 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 very thin gold coating. Only conductive samples are suitable for electron microscopy. Untreated all the samples of metals uh, treated prevent them from burning up in the intense dielectric beam. The resulting image, therefore, of the metal is the resulting image out of the SEM or scanning electron microscope is uh, is nothing other than a scan using a dielectric uh, there's longitudinal dielectric uh, pulse uh, which was reflected off of uh, the metal coating of the object uh, which is to be examined. Um, a metal dielectric reflector of a uh, once living organism is not the original sample, nor are there electrons that are scanning it. This device in reality is a dielectric scanner reflector, which produces fine images that are only reflected off of metal surfaces. The very focusing beam of these microscope uh, constrictor lenses are of dielectric flat. They're, they're actually electromagnetic, they refer to lenses in, uh, in uh, SEM, scanning electron microscopy. They're nothing other than the magneto, uh, magneto constrictors, which allow the focusing of the dielectric longitudinal beam. So if you stuck in like a tiny ant or you know some little piece of whatever the hell, so you can check the surface of it in electron microscopy, it is first coated with uh, a shower of uh, of atomized gold. Uh, it is the, the sample is positively charged, and uh, the argon gas uh, allows the uh, the imposition of these uh, gold particles to fall on and coat at the atomic level, which means that you can get way way down, you know, very 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 tiny images of you know, like the hair on the end of a hair of an ant or something like that. So, But you're not actually looking at living tissue or anything, you know, like my skin or this cloth or this plastic. It is all cold, coated in a, uh, in a conductive film of gold. So even the electron microscope doesn't shoot electrons. Of course, the results are the same. We say, well, it's an electron microscope. No, specifics are really important. What is happening is, is the longitudinal dielectric beam is being shot at an object that has been coated with a uh, conductive surface and the reflectance off of that uh, is scanned in. And obviously the results are stunning, but there are no little electrons being shot at any objects in an electron microscope. Now, here are the fact remains, and you're going to have to consider the facts. I don't give a damn. What you think about me. I'm just checking the time again. Don't give a damn what you think about me. I'm unimportant. The important thing here is that you need to consider the fact that there's one idiot that invented nothing. Einstein. He invented nothing. All his ideas were stolen um, from Havre Poincaré. The greatest minds that gave you 100% of the electrical grid. Uh, Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside. Uh, these, the, all these people said the notion of electron as a particle was an absurdity, a psychosis, nonsense. It is absolutely absurd that we consider that there are particles flowing through a wire. Yeah, the entire universe is fields, and fields are not particles. A field has never been denoted. By denoted, I mean defined. Fields are particle-free ether modalities, okay? There are no particles mediating out discharges, and obviously instantaneous action at a distance can never be uh, undergone in communication, bidirectional communication, by using particles. Your entire notion that there are electrons flowing through wires is an absolute insanity spawned by the stupidity of Western existential imperialism, existential, uh, existential atomism, excuse me. Thanks for watching.